Hello and welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. Today we're having a look at yet another Quake map. This one's fairly new. It is by Matthias Warch. And I've probably butchered that name as I've been warned in TerraFusion many many times but you're just going to have to live with it. And it is called A Past and Future Secret. So this map was actually finished off by a mapper called Neki. I've had a look at a couple of his maps on this channel, so you're probably familiar with his work. And uh, Matthias Watch, if you're not familiar with him, he made the original Beyond Belief back in 1997. He was also the lead designer on Star Wars 1313 before it was unfortunately cancelled. Luckily I think he's found his feet again, I think he's at 2k games now, looking at his Twitter quickly. So this map is actually best played within the Beyond Belief mod, so I'll put a link to it in the description so you can download it. The only difference is, if you don't play it with the Beyond Belief mod, then the uh, the end boss is not killable. Honestly, it's worth downloading and playing Beyond Belief by itself anyway. It's an absolute classic that every discerning Quake player should have played at least once. So let's go, shall we? So this map just oozes kind of Quake Episode 1 qualities. Got this very very swampy environment using the classic id textures. Reminds me a lot of maps like Gloom Keep from uh, the original Quake. It's very very cool. This is uh, recorded on hard. Uh, there's a couple of differences on hard. Like this fiend is actually a, I think it's just a standard knight on normal. So there are some different challenges available. I like that uh, you kind of have a choice how you want to engage the fiend at the start because it's on a movement path that starts moving away from you when the map starts. You can kind of choose when to engage it. So here's our vista that kind of shows off the map. Now one of the best features of this map I thought was the, the use of zombies and how the player has to deal with them because you you don't get an explosive weapon to deal with zombies until the very very end of the mod and by that time there's barely any zombies left in the map. <laughs> so the level designers, both Watch and Nikki, I guess, have put this together. And it's a brilliant piece of design. I, I don't think I've really seen uh, kind of environmental hazards and things like sp spawns used to actually kill zombies in ways like this. It's really really clever. Very unique. I can't wait to see other mappers start using stuff like this because unless I'm missing something really obvious, I don't think I've ever seen stuff like this before. It's really, really cool. So here we see the silver key raised up. We can't get to it just yet. As you can see, there's always completely unkillable zombies in our way as well. As well as things like all these metal grates. So I think it's fairly obvious that the player has to kind of explore elsewhere first of all. Now we have to find a uh, some kind of mechanism to get this button to work. I like the intro of the lights turning on down the corridor and then you have the uh, the ogre teleporting at the end. The player's eyes are kind of being drawn towards it with the lights turning on. Then you notice it teleport in, that's a nice touch. So one thing which people may not like about this map is that you're kind of stuck with the shotgun for a really long time. And The ammo situation is it's tight but doable. I actually thought it was really well balanced. Uh, some people perhaps may not have enjoyed it too much but you always have enough ammo, but you never feel like you do. It's kind of very, very tricky to uh, balance it in such a way like that. But it actually works really, really well. See, we've got the silver key door. Let's go and find the silver key first. There's also some nice secrets in this map. I think there's seven overall. I think I found four in this run. and. Somewhat strangely, I think I found five or six in my first run. <laughs> I missed a couple on the second run that I recorded here for you guys. Hey ho, never mind. So we're actually going to come back to that secret later because it kind of uh, opens up into a, a double barrel secret error if you like. So here we can grab the cog from here. This feels like a classic Nicky kind of progression moment. Oh, 
lots of lava. Probably want to be a little bit careful here. If you look carefully, you can see kind of tracks in the in the bottom of the lava pit that actually raise up later on. That's a nice touch. So I like how once we picked up the key, all these um, arrows appear in the walls that kind of guide us back here. They weren't there before, so that's a really nice touch. Now we can grab the quad damage here. So this is the first way that we deal with zombies. So you have like a timed segment here where you have to kill as many zombies as you can before the quad damage wears off, otherwise you're going to be in a bit of trouble. Uh, this is really fun. I mean, giving zombies is always fun. Doing it with the quad damage is... Uh, even more so. And we can finally get access to the silver key. So I, re I really like how this area is set out. The silver key is kind of up high, there's no way to get to it. Kind of forces the player to explore around a bit to find a solution. It works really well. I mean, we randomly get a lightning gun there. I, I don't know, I, th I think the lightning gun should have been introduced in a better way, not just kind of lying in a corridor you've already been in. Feels like a little bit of an anticlimax for one of the most powerful weapons in the game. Let's now we get the introduction of the spawns. One of them does get away from me here, but luckily he falls in the lava and explodes. Now, I'm a bit rusty on my quake. I didn't think spawns died just from falling in lava like that. Maybe there's something in the mod which damages enemies when they're in lava, or perhaps there's a hurt trigger down there or something. I have no idea, but... Cool nonetheless. You've got that yellow armor secret over on the wall there. It's actually not possible to jump there from a... Uh, from this side, so it's kind of an open-ended secret, you just have to work out how to get there. There's actually a couple of ways that you can work your way onto that ledge. Here's the mega health secret. So this one's kind of given away a little bit because you've got the zombie, in, not the zombie, but the ogre in the alcove here. So we're kind of already looking for ways to get across there. I like that, looking around for the uh, the new knights that you just heard activate and then they all come bar barreling around the corner all at once. That's a nice touch. So here, we're on top of the castle here. A big ambush takes place here a bit later on. We're not quite there yet. So here's some more zombies. And again, there's a little bit of a puzzle involved in defeating them. So in this case, we're just going to crush them with a the button. This is a secret I didn't manage to find out how to get to. See there's some cell ammo up there on the uh, on the beam. So that killing the zombie with a button, that's actually fairly important because it's a mechanic which is reused a couple of times in the map going forwards. It's kind of very very obvious here the relationship between the button and the crusher and that's kind of by design so players understand what that button is for in the future when they see it. So again here you've got zombies trapped in a cage with a crusher above them. And now the player's already thinking, right, okay, I wonder if there's another button to deal with these guys, and they would be right. The only thing I didn't like about this room is that this lift here is very well hidden. It's kind of sheathed in darkness. It's it took me a while to find it the first time through here. But there's the button that we can find. This one's slightly more hidden because it's not as critical to progress, whereas the last one, kind of zombies could hit you with their, their fleshy bits through the bars quite easily. It's very easy to avoid these ones, so the button is more hidden as, as a result. This lava pit is where we'll be eventually fighting Cathon. 
but not yet. Get rid of these walls in order to progress. I love the way you can look through the stairwell here. Uh, I don't think you see this enough in maps, like, stairs always tend to be covered like 100% but there's always such a great opportunities here to actually see other areas through stairways and through walls and things like that. And this actually reminded me to go in here and check. Because of the way the geometry of the map is set out, I kind of wondered if you could open one of these windows to get the yellow armour and turns out you can. Which is great. The other way to get the yellow armour is there is a secret area that I've unfortunately missed in this run through but you can get on top of the uh, roof of this building and you, of course you can just drop down and pick up the yellow armor from there yeah I really can't remember where I found the entrance to that before but yeah I found it on my first playthrough but missed it on this one <laughs> This is another area I really like, so lights are turned on as you progress to reveal uh, various ogres behind bars trying to shoot you. This area feels very, very kind of classic Quake style. With enemies shooting from the shadows that are only revealed when you get close. I love the limited movement you have here as well because it's such an enclosed space. It makes you really, uh, really wary of the ogre's attacks because there's not a lot of room to dodge them. And we have our first big arena. Again, I'm fairly low on ammo here. I have five shells, a uh, couple of nails, but there's always just enough to keep you going. There's a couple of instances in this playthrough where I'm actually using a, a less than op less than optimal weapon to kill enemies because of the ammo situation. I'm really trying to save my uh, higher quality weapons for bigger enemies. We can come back to this room and pick up the gold key. Which of course reveals the Cathon. In Classic Quake, Cthon is completely undamageable. In the Beyond Belief mod, he actually is damageable. You can kill him with uh, standard bullets, which kind of got me into a little bit of a pickle. The first time I played this mod, because I just unloaded everything I had into him and actually ran out of ammo completely. So I, I did this next area with an axe. <laughs> so here's kind of what I was talking about earlier. It's another instance of using zombies in a really interesting way and spawns as well, so spawns are actually trapped in these uh, cages here and uh, various buttons, contraptions and levers just kind of activate either spike shooters to kill the spawns in their cages which destroys all the zombies near them or in some cases the player has to shoot the spawn it's a great idea, it can be used in so many different ways So uh, zombies have always been an interesting enemy in Quake just because of the fact that you just can't kill them unless you have an explosive weapon. But I've never really seen that kind of uh, abused like this. Where you actually have to use other things in the map to kill the zombies, like other enemies. I think it's a really, really interesting idea. So here you can see there was a, a small little alcove raised over there when this last platform raised and there's actually a grenade launcher over there which makes this next section a lot easier if you can uh, work out how to get to it. I had a really good look around here but we're just going to skip past it because I was there for about 10 minutes trying to work out how to get there. I think the idea is because it's such a short, uh, a short hop through the lava perhaps you're just meant to run through the lava to get it and take a bit of health damage. I think it's doable with the amount of armor I had there, but didn't want to risk it. I'm thinking there is a button somewhere to actually raise up a platform from the lava to get to it, because again, this is why the uh, platforms raising up the lava is so such a great visual aid. 
because you can actually see them under the lava before they get raised up and there's a you can see one by the grenade launcher power up so there must be a way to activate it somehow just couldn't find it so now we get the rocket launcher we can finally start taking out these zombies and this area is kind of built around the whole Cathon battle so there's lots of uh, little windows into his arena where he can shoot you from so you always have to be a little bit careful here it's kind of like a little gauntlet there of running in to get more cell ammo and uh, trying to dodge his projectiles then of course we have a quad damage at the end so this makes it very very easy to kill him and there we go So honestly I think this battle's over perhaps a little bit too quickly. I think there could have been a, a much more kind of intricate arena built around this, kind of a couple of different levels perhaps, where perhaps the ammo situation is forcing you forward, but the addition of a quad damage just kind of uh, makes you sit in one place and just nuke him in one shot almost. <laughs> but yeah, overall, really, really enjoyable map. Very, very old school influenced. I enjoyed it a lot. There's a couple of secrets I haven't found yet, so I'm going to have to keep playing it until I find them all. Anyway, check it out, guys. The link is in the description, as always, and I'll see you next time.